I call this kind of my locker room. It's got all my paddling gear ready to go at all times, some extra layers and other stuff. Look at, I even have, what else do I have in here? This is a gem, freestyle canoeing, written by Lou Gleros and Charlie Wilson. I don't know if that's in print still, but if you can find it, it's a pretty fun book. If you go look at Grumman canoes nowadays out of aluminum, you know, they get up toward a thousand and over. So there's usually not a whole lot of aging that happens to a used canoe. Sometimes some of the rivets or they get dented. I asked if it leaked, he said no leaks. You know, you'd never know for sure, but you can always use JB Weld aluminum. And so I'm not really concerned about much on this boat and I'll probably just buy it, but a little red truck might help me get it down to $200, we'll see. Uh, the other thing that was really cool with some of these old Grumman's that I love is that they have the original paddles with them. And often these original paddles are solid wood. Like uh, last Grumman I bought for a little more had solid ash canoe paddles. And so as I look at this boat for $225, I'm like two super old school, solid ash canoe paddles. That alone right there, to me, if they're in good condition, is worth like $100 at least. I mean, you know, to buy a beaver tail type paddle these days of solid wood, you know, they're hard to find. Check this out. This is the rig they got it on. A couple hits. Rivets look good. Rivets look good. Couple hits right there. There. This is uh, just a nice 15 foot Grumman. I kind of like a couple things. Somebody had drilled these lining holes right here. At least this one's lower in the back. Uh, that's the front. And then the back, back here, they have a little higher. But that's kind of a neat thing, although they're small. So we'll have to get some really good paracord in there. Somebody painted it blue, but that's okay. Blue boat's not bad. Uh, let's see what else we can see. Main concern is a little dent right here, but maybe I'll pound that out, maybe I won't, but let's go paddle it. All right, we got the canoe in the water. It's been sitting in this water for a good 15 minutes. Uh, I don't see any immediate leaks, so that is a great sign. Uh, here is the canoe paddle I got. These are definitely not solid paddles. These are, uh, I forgot the name of the brand painted over here, um, but definitely, you know, a wood cheapo paddle, super short with a bad grip. And you know, this is where that bending branches rock guard tip is so nice because anytime you see one of these older solid wood paddles, they all basically split in the ends. I think this one may have dodged a bullet. Oh no, there it is. It's got a split right there. So, you know, that is definitely what you get when you buy these. They still sell these paddles, you know, right off the shelf in like farm stores and department stores, um, but they just don't hold up very well and long and so but we're going to take it out with it i've got it set up with my little kneeling pad that's an absolute necessity in a hard boat like this and i'm just going to kind of set my butt about here and see how she paddles so these grubbins actually have a to me they actually have a, a, a shoulder that's actually quite predictable i hate those coleman's because they have this hard edge and they just don't goop over like this thing does so it actually does pretty well the paddle's way short Okay, that keel on here doesn't make it draw quite as easy as uh, you know, a boat that doesn't have a keel to it.
people, check out the float tanks. These would actually offer a lot of buoyancy to this boat. They're a little screw and gasket and I'll have to take those apart later. Seats are all original and great condition. They've got that same little gasketed float tank there. Uh, must have been resealed possibly. Um, there's the stern. And then this boat also, which is pretty cool, has the sailing mast. You know, you can put a sailing mast right there. Ah, here's a little duck couple out on a date. Also such a perfect thing to do in a tandem canoe. Even this aluminum one I'm in. You know, there's a couple times putting that up there where I'm just like, oh, and that is why you pay more for a canoe. It's just, I think on a Saturday morning and you're drinking your coffee, wondering what to do. And you just remember that, oh, the first thing you did when you went out and the last thing you did when you went out and I got to put it back in the garage. So it's got one more oh, moment. So, you know, back surgery is not cheap either. Uh, so thinking of going cheaper and heavier doesn't always pay off. I have to say I'm very pleased with my $225 purchase. I just, people ask me kind of what boat would you own if you could only own one? And because I am a family man and a dog owner, the answer is quite clear, a tandem canoe. Uh, of course, a lighter tandem is my preferred, but if I'm on a budget and this is all that I could afford, this is a great option. And the cool thing about an aluminum canoe is that if you down the road decide to buy a lighter canoe just keep that aluminum canoe and brings and you know have it be your loaner have it be your invite boat uh, maybe down the road you have some teenage kids and uh, it's perfect for them they're not going to complain about a heavier boat and keep them off the screens so we're going to get home and we're going to put this next to the other one in my backyard it will not be going in the canoe cathedral because one thing aluminum does really well is hangs out in the sun so that's where this boat's gonna end. And uh, if you ever come to Bend and you wanna hang out and you ask to borrow a canoe, you might get the uh, paddle Old Blue.